Honeycomb Brazy, full name Nashawn Terran Itez Jones, was born in Mobile, Alabama on the 23rd of February 1995. And despite there being some rumors that he was born in Atlanta, it's Mobile, Alabama on his birth certificate. At the time of his birth, his mother had only just turned 16, and she would post the birth certificate on Facebook with a caption revealing that she had indeed gotten pregnant at just 15 years old. And a young Honeycomb Brazy would seemingly spend much of his childhood in a small house owned by his grandparents, located on Dr. Thomas Avenue in the Happy Hills neighborhood, part of the historical Africatown community. As Brazy raps in his song 223, his upbringing was defined by poverty, with Brazy and his siblings regularly sleeping on the floor, and even claiming to have been literally born in the middle of the street. Moreover, the house was only a stone's throw away from the infamous large public housing project called the Josephine Allen Homes. These projects can even be seen behind a young Brazy in an old family photo likely taken in front of his grandparents' house. Growing up in these projects with hundreds of units and dozens of buildings was Honeycomb Brazy's introduction to the streets and the gang lifestyle, and it was also in these projects where he would end up losing his very first friends to the streets. In 2007, an 18-year-old man named Robert Lucas, known in the streets as Slick Rick, or just Slick, was gunned down by an undercover police officer who had arrived at the Josephine Allen Homes to investigate a call about drug activity. The officer claimed that Slick had pointed a gun at him during a chase, but the Happy Hills locals were outraged, demanding that that officer should be fired. After the feds would become involved in the investigation, that officer was eventually found to be not guilty of any wrongdoing. And in a stark example of failing upwards, that officer named Paul Birch would eventually become the new Mobile County Sheriff in 2023. Brazy would later reminisce on Facebook calling Slick the realist and saying F the Mobile police for shooting his friend five times and leaving him to die in the street, with commenters agreeing and dissing Paul Birch for the killing. Eventually, in 2011, the city of Mobile decided to close down and demolish the Josephine Allen homes. However, that demolition would not take place until almost a decade later in 2020, and in June of 2011, when the projects were still inhabited, an intern from the Mobile Youth Survey would keep a blog on her summer job surveying young people in Mobile and discussing the environment around the Josephine Allen Holmes projects, with these blog posts including long passages all about the shocking amount of gun violence that was witnessed in this area, and at the end of her week in the Happy Hills community, she would actually conclude by writing about the feeling of hopelessness that the youth in this neighborhood were feeling, fearful of them being consumed by the gang life like their older family members had been too. Being raised in such an environment by a family with deep ties to the streets, it didn't take long for a young Honeycomb Brazy to also get involved in the life of crime, and at just age 10, he would get his first major run-in with the law. Brazy and his friends would break into a store to go and ride go-karts and vandalize the place, with these wild childhood activities landing Brazy in trouble with the law very early in his life. Brazy later explained in an interview that he's been on probation ever since this incident, and he wouldn't even make it to high school as a result. You start, when was the first time you went to jail, what, 12, 13? No, like 10 years old, broke in the stove, broke in room to go, boys. Rooms to go. Yeah, I just ran. They all broke in the factory, though. They had a factory. I was just riding the golf cart and sitting there, whole f the little thing, you little f. Just having fun for real. Them folk locked my ass up. You broke in the rooms to go, like just riding go karts, not not really stealing anything, but just having a good time. Yeah, I was f up too, though. Knocking shit over too, though. I was all f up, like busted a snack machine and shit. Just bad as fuck. Man, you wild as hell, man. Oh, I've been on probation there soon. Dropping out of school so young likely pushed Brazy even further into the street life, and with his parents constantly being in trouble with the law too, he was left with only his grandparents to try and guide him. In a freestyle on Facebook Live, Brazy would rap about these times, apologizing to his grandmother for dropping out of school, where he rapped, I did this for you, grandmama, and I know you mad I ain't make it through school, grandmama, and I'm mad I ain't make it through too. Unfortunately, for his young son, in 2008, Brazy's father, Big Comb, would catch the case that would take him out of the streets for good, but according to Honeycomb Jr., this wouldn't necessarily stop his street activities as Big Cone would allegedly appoint trusted members on the outside to tend to his business whilst he was behind the wall, and one of these trusted enforcers was Brazy's cousin. Around this time, Honeycomb Brazy was also sometimes living with his aunties and their families from both his mother's and his father's sites, finally giving him a chance to be part of a more normal family dynamic. But unfortunately, this wouldn't last long, because soon after his father had gone to prison for good, he would allegedly send a barely teenage Honeycomb Brazy on a dangerous mission that would almost end up destroying his life and the life of his cousin too. But like, I would stay on my mama, mama though. I stay with my aunt Tony, you know. But that, that shoot at my aunt Nisha house sometime. But I end up shooting her son. That was my cousin, so I, you know, they all type of shit going on. Whoa, wait, wait. You shot your cousin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, yeah. It's like on accident? Nah, like on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> After catching serious charges, still from behind bars, Big Home would allegedly keep doing business in the streets, overseeing the operation that would be run on a street level by his closest confidants, one of them being Brazy's cousin, whose mother's house, Honeycomb Jr., was sometimes living in. Unfortunately, Big Honeycomb would eventually notice that some money had come up missing, leading him to believe that someone within his operation must have been stealing from the pot, with Big Home's suspicions falling on his nephew, Brazy's cousin. Was it like a, was it like a family, or like, was it an argument? Like, can you take us through that situation? 
Nah, that was like him and my dad, some shit with him and my dad, you know. He had got down, some money came on missing, I'm just gonna say that. Some money came on missing, there with my dad, you know, he was locked up. You know, he had, they gave him life and shit, so I was tripping already. When he rent that to me, you know, I had with the whoop. Big Honeycomb seemingly wanted his 13-year-old son, Honeycomb Jr., to go and handle this dispute over the drug debt with his own cousin, who he was at least sometimes living with. That cousin and Brazy's aunt lived in Plateau, another one of the older Africatown communities located across an interstate that runs through them. And so, on the instruction of his father, Big Comb, a 13-year-old Honeycomb Brazy and his friends from the Happy Hills would make their way to Plateau, where he would end up confronting his cousin, shooting him, leaving him seriously injured and ultimately paralyzed. I was like 13 years old. Like, Pop been gone there since I was like 12, for real, when he left. But I was 13 years old and I took the hit for him. And you know the streets know about that, that I end up paralyzing my cousin. About that right now, you know, paralyzed my own cousin, took a hit from my Pop. 13 years old, I took a hit from my Pop, man, on dick, on blood, man. That's how I end up going to prison, I was 15 years old. Y'all, y'all want to know the story? Wait till my daddy get on here, he'll tell y'all. That's how I went to prison when I was 15 years old, man. I took a hit for my pops, man. On blood, I took a hit for my daddy. Y'all never did no shit like that. You 13 years old, your daddy hit you up here in jail. Man, they finna, they trying to give me life, man. They trying to give me life, and they woot the woot the Get a rent off, woot the woot the woot. He wet? Man, for real? Man, yeah, man, I'm telling you, man. You know, man, little one, man, little one. I'm 13 years old, did I go spend? Like the f way. After shooting his cousin, Brazy obviously couldn't just return back home to either his grandparents or auntie's cribs. And to make matters even worse, the family from his dad's side were now furious with him, with his own grandmother hoping for his death. Yeah, yeah, my grandma mad. My grandma told me f me on dead. Then my dad and mom, I'm like, what up? I hit them, they blow my phone. I'm like, what's up, Brennan? You, they gonna, you gonna die with them, you gonna die with them do my grandma tell me, oh, blood. <laughs> you gonna die with the man? Cause I had a happy, I had some happy head with me when I did it, you feel me? But like, they ain't shooting that like that. They ain't had no gun. But they was just right now when they happened. You know, my cousin was playing, so I'm from happy head. That's right across the street from each other, you know? So we did it. We shot back to happy head when I did this, you know? I did it in front of everybody, though. You know, Pop said, run it. So, you know, you know, we gotta do it. You know, and just do it. You know, it's done. You know, that really does it. So, with the police and his own family after him, Honeycomb Brazy would have to lay low, and at only age 13, he went on the run, actually managing to stay hidden for several months, until he was eventually found and charged at just age 14, leading to a three-year sentence at the Strickland Youth Center. Now, I get locked up when I was 14. I went on the run. They covered when I was like 14. I, I got out when I was got down, turning 17. I, I was like 16 when I got out. No. And I would turn this out to However, Brazy, many years on from this incident, would actually show remorse for his actions, later revealing that he doesn't have anything against his cousin and that he would have handled things completely differently today. I was young then, though. Like, right now, I don't know if I still do that again. Because I still f with Buzz. It was just a misunderstanding. But, you know, I would have thought better about it. But I was young. And then my dad is telling me to run it. So, you know, dad is telling me to run it. You know, I'm finna run it. You know how that go. So, I read that bit, though. And Brazy's also talked about this incident in his music. For example, in the song Gucci Flow, Brazy mentions taking a hit for his dad and paralyzing his own blood, as well as claiming that he was actually charged as an adult, although he was only 15 years old at the time of the sentencing. Brazy would also mention the incident in his first and biggest hit song, Freestyle, where he mentions his grandma being in tears due to his actions, as well as people calling his phone and telling him what he did was wrong. Thankfully, his cousin has now made a full recovery and can even walk again, and Brazy has apparently even rekindled his relationship with his cousin, explaining how he used to look up to him when he was younger and how his Dad treated the cousin like he was his son, and Honeycomb Jr. like he was the nephew. Well, now he he back now though. He back walking. He straight. We straight now though. You know we cool. You okay? So you shoot your cousin. He gets paralyzed. What is your relationship like afterwards? He came. I ain't gonna. I f with him. He you know we straight. We straight. You know, cause I used to look up to him when I was young. You feel me? Like uh -huh. I used to look up to him. Like my daddy put him on type. You know. He was like, my daddy treated him like that was his son, you know, and I was like the nephew for real. 
Before reaching the age of 17, Honeycomb Brazy had already experienced a long bid in jail and several years on probation, and at this point he was clearly desensitized to violence and completely unafraid of prison, with this setting a dangerous precedent in his life for the years that followed. And after returning home to the Happy Hills neighborhood with his grandparents Tony and Sheila Lewis, Brazy would continue his reckless lifestyle, catching yet another very serious case soon after this. 